Hey everybody, this is Jared with Duckless Plus once again. I got some really exciting news. There's a new product that just basically got available. We've been waiting for this for a couple of years now. Um, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the MLZ KP series, which is the 9, the 12, and the 18,000 BTU. Well, now Mitsubishi has just released the new MLZ KY06 unit, which is a 6,000 BTU unit. The, the most amazing thing and the reason why I'm so excited about this particular product, you guys, is that now we can get you know a smaller system into smaller rooms instead of basically putting a 9,000 BTU unit in there. Not only is this gonna be a lot more efficient for that room or those smaller spaces, but this is a much more compact machine than the MLZ KP09 series. The nine through the 18 uh, units basically they're a little bit wider. They have the exact same footprint. Didn't matter if it was a nine, a 12 or an 18, but now we got this guy right here. I'm just extremely excited about it. I feel like it's going to make our job so much easier. Anybody that is a fan of the one way ceiling cassette, this is going to be almost our new go-to right now. I feel like this unit is going to basically help everybody across the board um, between consumer and contractor for installation purposes. So basically right now, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this unit. We're gonna open it up for you guys and show you how it works. Um, and then we're gonna also go over how you install uh, MHK2 uh, uh, wireless thermostat. We're gonna put this on uh, uh, basically a 18,000 BTU one-way ceiling cassette here in a little bit, but we're gonna walk you through this. So this product right here, I really love. I feel like this is a, the best controller that you can get. You can pair this with a Kumo Cloud, so you can have the Wi-Fi technology to this, and you can have the, the simplicity of a standard thermostat versus a remote control. We do hear a lot of people, you know, uh, when they look at the remote control that comes with the machine, and we'll unveil that in here, there'll be one in this machine as well, but um, we'll, we'll show you the comparable differences between this and, and, and you know, uh, how this can, works here. So, are you guys ready? We're gonna open this up. I'm super excited. This is the very first one. We just got this today. Um, yeah. I'm gonna pull my knife out on this one. Here we go, ready? Oh my goodness, I'm like so excited, you guys. I, I just, I don't know what to say. I'm just really, 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 really excited. Not only um, is this gonna make it a lot easier for us in the field to do installations, it's gonna basically allow us to be a little bit more precise in some of these super small joist reaches, so. All right, so the, the box is very similar to the MLZ KP09 series. So you're just gonna lift it straight up. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I know, I'm a nerd, right? I'm an HVAC nerd. So look what they got here, you guys. They got the template. So it's very similar if you've watched any of our other uh, MLZ installations, how we build a two by four bridge and run the all thread down to the feet. So. That's exactly how this is gonna get installed as well. You're gonna use that same installation practice that we've created, you know, uh, doing the other installs on the other units. So I'm, I'm excited. This is basically just a super small scaled down unit of the ceiling cassette. Um, when you open these up, you'll have your template. You're gonna get all your other components of it. Let's set this aside. This is kind of new to me, so you're gonna get the standard uh, remote control. I personally am not a big fan of these. If if, uh, if I were to be getting a system, I would want definitely want the MHK2 thermostat paired with the Kumo Cloud. So again, you know, it's just a standard remote control. They always come with this little setup on the MLZ KP 09 series through the 18. And what we do is, give me a second to open this up. I'm just gonna rip it open. I'm gonna rip it out. That's what I say if I don't like something, rip it out, right? So this is something you don't want to throw away. And I, I'm really going to kind of just walk through the, the whole thing, the whole gamut on this particular unit. So this is the holster 
for the thermostat, or the it's not a thermostat, the remote. So basically you can put this anywhere in the room. What we've noticed is a majority of our cu customers do not like this on their wall. They actually enjoy having this like on their nightstand or somewhere close to where like maybe their TV remotes are. You know, that's basically what people like to use on this. So, but that is what this is for. We'll set that down here. They always come with this little kit here. This little kit, and it doesn't matter if it's an MLZ, KP09, 12, 18, or a six, um, it comes with all this standard uh, washer set right here. Comes with four insulated washers. And then it comes with four non-insulated washers. If you watch our other videos, it does explain to you how we like to do that. Comes with your batteries, that's obviously for your remote. One interesting thing I just learned about this one, opening it up, it only has the four screws for the template. So what this is for, I'll kind of break it down. Do you guys see this little hole right here? See that little hole? So that comes out the back side here. So when you guys are installing these on a new construction installation, you're gonna wanna keep these. So once you get your head in and none of the drywall is up, you're gonna simply take this, take these screws. Let me just set this to the side really fast. Give me just one quick moment. Oh, drain line, just like the other units, identical to the other units. What you're gonna to wanna to do with this, you can even see this is where the blade is, right? You're gonna slide it over here like so. You're gonna slide it over like that. And then you're gonna take this and come on over here. I wanna show you down inside this hole really quick. These screws drop straight down in there. And if you look down inside there, that's gonna be what you wanna put on during the construction phase. And you put it in every four hole, okay? Once it's in all the, all the holes, after you got your machine hooked up, your pipes are done and all that, you're not gonna wanna put your grill on there because they're gonna texture, they're gonna spray paint, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff which could damage your grill. So you want to keep your template and you wanna keep it intact just like this so that you can drop it down, take your screws, drop them in each hole, tighten them on there, and then it's gonna be protected. What also that does is when they're doing their drywall, this is their edge of their drywall that they need to have. So it's gonna help them out also. I see a lot of the times they'll tear these off and it's kind of annoying and then they'll end up drywalling all the way to here and they'll end up drywalling all the way to here. But when they do that, they cover the access, the access points up on these machines. So drywallers, don't do that, okay? We don't like that. It really makes us have to do a lot of extra work because we got to cut the drywall out and you know it's it's no fun but that's basically the head itself if you look over here it's just like the other ones this is your entry point for your refrigeration piping this simply comes out on this side over here this is your control section where you're going to install your communication cable so um, there, I am just excited. Look at how small this guy is. I mean, it is absolutely, I mean, it's very cute, right? Yeah, I said it, cute. Um, drain line, obviously, it's gonna be going in over here. It's gonna be tying into there. What I like about these drains is they're flexible. You hook them up, you run them up. When we run our bridges across, we strap that to that. So. That's basically uh, this piece, but I got one more thing I want to open up and then we're going to kind of walk through that. It is the new grill. But anyway, that's the grill. 
Um, we're going to open it up. You're going to pull your grill out. You're going to set that down. When you open these up, I don't know what it is. Some of our techs, I've seen guys do it. This is where the screw and the hardware for your grill is. It's inside the back here. So we like to just leave all that in there um, during, during the installation until we're gonna put this in. So there it is. It's a scaled down version of the standard unit. That's pretty sweet. Um, let me open it up really quick. So it's just like the other one. It's got two Phillips screws right here. This little back plate, we just undo this. and unhook the tethers. And then it's gonna come right out. Boom. Done that a couple of times on the other ones, right? When you're doing these, just do them hand tight. Um, if you use a drill when you're using it here, you can totally overdo it and you'll break it. You can crack the, the, the connection here. So these just pop straight up. They also have a tether. So what we like to do is we like to just take them all the way off. 100%, just take them all the way off. But we also like to just put the screw right back in. Once you get it up, a lot of guys will lay them somewhere, put them in their pocket, they'll lose them. Um, one important thing about this installers, if you're gonna be installing your grill, never put your grill down. This is a very delicate plastic, you'll scratch it. Um, we always recommend that you lay it up, okay? Um, one really cool thing I just noticed is it does have the, the emergency operational switch button here. That's probably, yeah, that's what that's for. So always lay that, lay that grill up, put your screw back, then you know where it's at. Um, same little scenario, they have these two little clips. So once you slide it in, it just clips on there just like so. That's it. Then. You're gonna take the screws, and I'm not gonna open it all the way up. You take your screws from here, and you're gonna put them in the four corner holes. However, you do have a hole here, and you have a hole here. This is, uh, let me show you this real quick. You wanna come over here and take a look at this. Right here on this portion of the grill is kind of a hidden little, a little clip right here. So you just stick your fingernail in there, and you pop it out. Um, you're gonna wanna put a screw in there. So there's six screws that come in here. If you look right here, you can see it. One there, one there, one here, one here, one on the backside, and then one right there. So and if you look in here, there is six screws for you. And they also give you an extra one of these if you lose it. So what I always recommend you do is definitely keep all the extra screws. Even these long screws, I really like using these sometimes, especially on the other models. When you're, when you're installing them in the drywall in there, sometimes the drywall is just really tight. Um, so, or let's say it's a really old house and it's not like a new construction and you got a little bit of like a wave or the framing wasn't done well. These really clean up the look that the smaller ones can't get. If you look right there, you can kind of see the the shortness distance between this one and that one obviously so i do like keeping these ones i keep them all 
and then you just have them for later. You know, if you ever lost one of these ones, they actually will work as well. So um, make sure you don't lose your little clip. You're just gonna simply put it back in there. I, I do like this grill a lot more than the other one. Um, I'll kind of show you guys something I like about it. I got it. <laughs> These are definitely smaller and a little bit tighter. I really like that they're, they seem to be um, modified. And this is something funny. Me and Denver have actually been talking about this a lot on the larger unit. If you look at this grill, they have a metal bracket here. This is new. I, I really love this. I feel like this is a huge upgrade from the other grills because the other grills don't have this and they're a little longer. We'll show you that too. We'll pull out a tape measure and we'll measure them for you. But um, these, uh, the longer ones, they can bow a little bit when they come down. I can already tell that this is a much more rigid grill and you can see that they put a metal frame all the way around it right here. So I really, really like that. I think that this is a huge engineering upgrade and I hope that they transition that into the, the larger units, the 9, 12, and 18s as well in the future. You know, and that is one thing about Mitsubishi. They do always think about upgrading their units and making them better. So I feel like they probably added a few features to this machine that they didn't have on the other one. Um, one thing I do want to talk to you guys about as well, since I have this open, this piece here is your drain pan and it's made out of styrofoam. Okay. So when you're putting it up in there, I highly recommend you not grab it from here. I, I see a lot of guys, they'll pick it up. You know, they're, they're not that heavy. They'll pick it up though and they won't grab it by the feet. You wanna grab it by the feet right here. You don't wanna be grabbing it from the bottom right here and trying to push it up. You don't wanna do that. So you wanna grab it and lift it from here like that. Don't be lifting it from that styrofoam pan. You could crack it. The instruction manuals are gonna be right down underneath it. Don't throw those away. I know that a lot of you installers out there don't like to keep your instruction manuals, but please just keep your instruction manuals. Just keep them all together at the end of the job, make a little packet, give it to your customer so that they have all their paperwork together at once.